All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed your mini break. Um, what I realized is what I might start doing is probably cut it off around close to 20 minutes because I know that anything longer and your mind is like, oh my gosh, this is so much information and you tend to not um, pay attention or you tend to get the um, primary and re... There's a name for the last one, um, but anyhow, the whole theory is that you remember the first bits of information, then you remember the last bits of the information, but forget everything in the middle, and I don't want that to occur. So where I left off was talking about how knowing the types of bacteria is important because that can tell you what you're dealing with. It could also tell you how you might protect yourself, and it also lets you know how serious or um, uh, what, what extent the bacteria is to um, having risk of serious infection. So know that um, bacteria are all different with how they grow. Some bacteria like um, leprosy, that's a very slow growing bacteria, so is tuberculosis. Some bacteria make spores such as um, anthrax and another one is C. diff, that's a very common infection that's spreading now. Um, other bacteria multiply very quickly like strep and um, cossi, MRSA is a really good example of that. Some bacteria also make a biofilm such as the ones that cause tooth decay. I know that tuberculosis makes a biofilm, and that also affects how we classify them and test for them. It's a fun little fact right there. So know that cossi are round-shaped bacteria. They kind of look like grapes. They may occur singular, singularly or in groups. Know that staphylococci is pus-forming bacteria that grow in cluster, clusters like bunches of grapes. They can cause abscesses, pustules, and boils. All sounds very nice, right? Some types of staphylococci the or staff may not cause infections in healthy humans. So some of us, like myself, are healthy carriers of staff. They can actually do a nose test. A lot of nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals, because they're healthy but around it, they become healthy carriers of the bacteria. This may not be an issue when you're young and healthy, but should you get very sick or develop an autoimmune disorder, it might be an issue. Know that um, streptococci are pus forming bacteria arranged in curves or lines resembling strings of beads. They cause infe infections such as strep throat and blood poisoning or septicis. Know that diptylococci are spherical bacteria that grow in pairs and cause disease such as pneumonia. Know that bacilli are short, rod shaped bacteria. They are the most common bacteria and produce diseases such as tetanus, lockjaw, typhoid fever, tuberculosis, and diphtheria. Know that bacilli, bacilli they're the most common, that is a test question for sure. Know that spirilla are spiral or corkscrew-shaped bacteria. You might also hear them being called spirochetes. They are subdivided into groups such as Trepomonia papadilla, which causes the STD syphilis, and Borrelia burgdorferi, which causes Lyme disease. Read the little chart on the causes of disease, such as bacteria, direct transmission, which is very important. Direct transmission is through sneezing, talking, breathing, touching, um, kissing, hand-to-hand -hand contact, body contact. Know that indirect transmission is the transmission of blood or bodily fluids through contact with an intermediate contaminant object, such as if I cut myself on this razor and I use it on you and I have a bloodborne pathogen, that's going to be an example of indirect transmission. Direct transmission, let's say I have the flu, I cough on you, it's going to spread the virus that way. Also know that some people, um, which is really interesting, are more susceptible than others. Uh, one person may be more susceptible to getting strep throat, another person may have natural immunity, and another person may be somewhere in the middle. Know that infection is an invasion of the body tissues by a disease-causing pathogen, and know that the term germ is just a very general term for um, anything that's really bad. No, um, it's not a scientific uh, synonym either, so for example, when you say germs, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, there's not going to be a scientific book that uses a definition germ. It's kind of like popular language. Um, but if I say something like, oh, that pathogen right there, that's um, E. coli, that's more specific. So germs is just very a uh, general term that is used in popular language. That I don't think is on the test, but it might be. Um, know that microorganisms are any organisms of microscopic to submicroscopic size. Know that parasites are organisms that grow, feed, and shelter on or in another organism. That's going to be the host. Some examples are going to be um, tapeworm, ticks, lice, fleas. They don't contribute to survival and they must need a host to survive and they actually may harm the host. Know that toxins 
are various poisonous substances produced by some microorganisms, bacteria and viruses. I always mark that one because it's always interesting. Um, I've never heard of virus producing toxin. If anything, I've heard of it tricking your immune system to essentially attack itself, but you know, I guess the book's always right. <laughs> and know that a virus is a parasitic submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in cells. They're not capable of reproducing on their own, and that's why a virus is not considered living. That also is what makes a virus different than a bacteria. Bacteria can live on or outside of a host, they're able to obtain nutrition and divide on their own. A virus can't divide or grow on its own. It has to invade a cell to create copies of itself. And I think what I wanna add, here's where I got confused when I read germs. Um, when you hear the word germs, think of just things that are bad for you. Anything in the, the world, word of germs could be a virus, a fungi, a bacteria. So germs is just a very general term. I always say it's important to be more specific because it kind of tells you what you're dealing with. Know that bacteria move in different ways. Cossi rarely show active motility, which means self-movement. Cossi are transmitted in the air because they're little bead shapes. That's why breathing can spread them quicker. Know that bacilli and spirilla are capable of movement and usually slender. They have special little hairs called flagella, sometimes called flagellum, that help them propel themselves. You might also hear people saying cilia, which is very fine hairs, like we have them in our nose, and that helps them turn and move and sense their environment. Flagella kind of move like this, and um, flagellum kind of moves like a tail. Know that bacteria um, must grow in different ways. During the active stage, it's when bacteria are growing and reproducing. They multiply in different conditions, but usually warm, dark, damp, and dirty places. Well, that's why we have to make a heart of bacteria. We don't want to provide them with an easy environment to grow. That's why we want to keep our stations clean, get the hair out of our brush, uh, make sure our chairs are all wiped down and clean, there's no food in our drawer. That makes it harder for the pathogens. Because whether we like it or not, they will always be there, and that's where it gets tricky. Bacteria will divide through binary fission. These are where the cells quickly reproduce, if you see it under a microscope. Watch some animations on that. That's when they're infectious. When the conditions become unfavorable and difficult to thrive, they either die or become inactive. When they're inactive, they're in a pause. It's like you press pause and remote. Bacteria is not active until the conditions become good again. Other bacteria are able to sp um, form spores, which are like a wax-like substance. When they're in the spore form, it keeps them safe. Know that um, there cannot be any bacterial infections without the presence of a pathogenic bacteria. Know that inflammation is a condition in which the body reacts to injury, irritation, or infection. And inflammation is characterized by redness, heat, pain, and swelling. Pus is created by infection. The components of pus are white blood cells that protect us from infection. They're like the warrior cells. When they die, they get excreted out. Bacteria and dead cells. The presence of pus is usually a sign of a bacteria infection, and if you see it on a client, you're not supposed to work on them because it's toxic to you, can hurt other clients, and if you're using chemicals, it can make the chemical enter the bloodstream, which is not good for the person. There is a local infection, which is a pimple or an abscess. It's contained in one area. It's local. If I have a pimple there, it's staying there. It's not systemic everywhere. Know that um, bacteria is spread everywhere. If they get in the wrong place, it can be dangerous. Um, know this right here, although lawsuits are rare considering the number of services performed in a salon, every year many salons are sued for allegedly causing staph infections. If you're not careful washing your implements, you can actually cause a staph infection in someone. Staph is responsible for food poisoning, including toxic shock syndrome. That's a very dangerous kind. You can die from that. Some of the bacteria are resistant to antibiotics such as MRSA, and that's why if you with stylus are sick, it's important for you to stay home because you don't want to be spreading that in the salon. You also want to finish your antibiotics because that can cause resistance. Know that um, some people may spread MRSA without knowing. That's why it's important to be vigilant in the salon. You don't want to perform services if they show visible signs of abrasion, infection, open sores, or are actively bleeding. When a disease spreads from one person to another, you have to know it's communicable or contagious. So you'll see them a lot in the um, salon. A lot of common ones are like nail funguses, um, head lice you'll see a lot. If someone has head lice in the salon, you are not able to service them. They have to go and get it treated at a special clinic with a note. No basic sanitation like hand washing between services, that's required. Make sure you have a special designated area in the salon to clean your tools, not always at your station. Know the terms related to disease, such as allergy. 
Sometimes someone who's allergic may show signs of a disease they don't really have. It's an allergy. Know that contamination is when your surfaces are dirty. They're covered in visible debris. No um, decontamination. That's removing things. Know that diagnosis is the symptoms of a disease. We cannot diagnose. Physicians must. Know the exposure incident is contact with broken skin or other body fluids that might put you at risk. Know that there is occupational disease, which are illnesses resulting from conditions associated with employment, such as prolonged and repeated, repeated overexposure to certain products or ingredients. That was a huge issue with a lot of the aldehyde and formaldehyde derivatives, usually in keratin treatments. Know that parasitic disease are caused by parasites, such as lice or mites. Know that pathogenic disease is diseases produced by organisms. Know that systemic disease, it's usually very serious, carried through the blood or lymphatic system, and it affects the whole body. Know that a virus is barely living. Some examples of viruses that, plays, that plague humans, mumps, measles, chickenpox, smallpox, rabies, yellow fever, hepatitis, polio, influenza, HIV, and AIDS. Um, know that in the salon, one of the most common ones is hepatitis B. You have to assess your risk. Know that vaccination is recommended for certain conditions. Also know that vaccination also carries side effects, and that's why it's a personal issue. There are some vaccines that you may feel are right for yourself and some that you may not feel are right for yourself. Um, I personally did not do any for the salon field, and I will tell you this. When you go in for your physical, if your state requires it, there are no vaccines required to be a hairdresser. So if the doctor tries to push you where you don't feel uncomfortable, don't be afraid to tell them that. Um, I don't feel comfortable accepting a tetanus shot when I'm in the salon because when you know the pathology, it makes you smarter about making medical decisions. I chose not to do the Tdap vaccine or the hepatitis V because I'm very careful in the salon and I'm willing to take that risk and I made that own decision. Um, know that certain viruses are very difficult um, to tr not only treat but highly contagious. One of the examples is HPV in the salon. Um, HPV, not, um, the STD, there's different types. There's the handworts. And actually, I'll never forget this. During my physical, they tried to sell me an HPV vaccine and I said, well, how am I gonna catch HPV in the salon? So we argued here and there, but I left. I didn't um, take any. But if you feel that you are immunocompromised and that the vaccine will help you, that's an option for you. Know that there's bloodborne pathogens such as HIV, hepatitis. Um, they can occur through facial treatments, hair cutting, chemical burns, nipping, anytime the skin is broken, waxing, and tweezing. Be very careful not to break um, the skin. We're also not allowed to um, under services. You know that there's different types of hepatitis, A, B, and C. A is a stomach bug, B is sometimes acute, um, or can be chronic, and hepatitis C is usually chronic, but there is now a treatment for it. Know that hepatitis B and C are the most common ones that are an issue in the salon. Um, know that HIV is another very common issue in the salon. It's spread through um, blood contact. A person can be infected with HIV for many years before having symptoms. There's different types. Type 1 is usually more pathogenic, um, shows symptoms quicker, and is a little bit more virulent. Type 2, not so much. If you accidentally cut a client who discloses their HIV positive, the tool will be contaminated. You cannot continue using the implement between cleaning and disinfecting it. Know that fungi are microscopic plant parasites that include mold, mildew, and yeasts. They can produce contagious disease such as ringworm. Mildew, however, grows on inanimate objects, plants, but does not cause disease. One of the most frequently common uh, fungal infection you will see in the salon is tinea barbe or barber's itch, or even athlete's foot for pedicure baths. That's why it's important to get all the gunk out of there. Some of the symptoms will be an itch, um, maybe a smell, you might get um, rings. Hair loss is very common if it's on the scalp. Tinea cap capitis is a fungal infection on the scalp. You'll see this a lot at the um, red papules, red rings. You'll see it a lot with people that are either wearing um, weaves or rapid weaves quickly and they don't clean it. If someone leaves a weave in for over a year, which is not recommended, all that human buildup and sweat can create the perfect fungal environment and you can actually get very nasty fungal infections. I actually had a coworker that had a client who had scatula and she said when she went to go shampoo her, um, she felt a crack, it almost felt like a helmet and it had a very musty odor. So know that, um, read the FYI and how they're spread. That can help you make decisions to prevent them. There are certain antitoxins that can counteract bacterial toxins. Then fungi are another example of spore-forming um, 
pathogens, and that's why it's important if you first wash your tools off before submerging them in your quats, that helps to keep them clean. Know that the most frequently encountered infection on the foot resulting from nail service is tinea pedis. That's a fungal infection. Both bacterial and fungal infections can spread to an infective client's nails or to other salon clients unless everything that touches clients is either properly cleaned and disinfected before reuse. Know that parasites need a host in order to grow. Humans can acquire it from eating improperly cooked food such as raw fish, raw meat. Most common external parasites that live on the outside include ticks, fleas, mice, and head lice. Head lice are a parasite responsible for contagious disease conditions. Know that um, head lice are called pediculosis capitis, meaning of the scalp, capitis, pediculosis meaning louse. Good way to remember that is there's, it almost looks like there's louse in that saying pediculosis. That gives you a hint that you're talking about head lice. There's also um, head lice that are becoming resistant to the special medications that we use to cure them. Know that um, in most states, cosmetologists are not allowed to use needles, lancet, and probes that penetrate the skin for good reason. Um, states that may allow that, such as callus removal, you might need additional training, so make sure you're always being um, vigilant on checking the state's website because let's say if your boss tells you, oh, yes, you can do that, and then you get caught, your boss is not going to take the fall for you. You can get in trouble. That's why it's important to know laws. Know that immunity is the ability of the body to destroy and resist infection. It can be natural or acquired, and it's usually a sign of good health. Natural immunity is partially inherited and developed through healthy living, natural exposure, breast milk. Know that acquired immunity is immunity in the body that develops after overcoming a disease through inoculation or exposure to natural allergens such as pollen, cat dander, and ragweed. Sometimes allergies get better as you get older, other times it gets worse. I used to have a bad dog allergy that went away. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna stop here and I'm gonna talk about in the next video the principles of prevention and some of the ways that we use to clean and some of our disinfectants. So I do wanna to talk to a little bit about um, health in the salon. If you're ever put in a position where you feel, I don't know if I should touch this client, it doesn't feel right, you have every right to refuse the service, even if your manager says, oh, I'll touch them anyway, because this is not just the salon's reputation, it's your personal license to uphold. Once you're licensed and you either cause further injury to someone or cause an infection, you can be held liable. And that's why it's very important to know your rights and proper cleaning. Knowing the pathogen, doing your own research, reading books, taking even college classes. These are all good ways to learn about microbial life and knowing how to prevent it as well as different health decisions that work. So I'm gonna end it here and I'm gonna come back with principles of prevention, take a five minute break, and I'll see you in a second.